Um, it is time to get started. Uh, this is the Town of Woodbridge Joint Board of Finance Board of Selectmen meeting uh, Tuesday, December 6, 22, for the purpose of reviewing uh, capital budgets. And the first capital budget we will review is Human Services. Mr. Chairman, can I make a quick Yes, question? yes, that yes. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, Ms. McCrevin wanted everyone to know that she got exposed to COVID. She is not sick, but her daughter has a certain the interest of keeping us all safe. She is at home tuning in. So just wanted to let everybody, she wanted me to say that. So I said I would, and I remembered. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Okay. I assume I can take my mask off to speak and then put it back on. Yep. Is that I guess okay. so. Yep. Okay. All right. I think testing okay <laughs> I'm Susan Davidson chair of the Human Services Commission after more than 11 years of fundraising grant writing and moving forward in small steps with first the bathroom and the ramp and always dreaming of a much needed newly renovated senior center the senior center renovation project is finally under construction. As you all know, the 55 and over population in town has grown to 37% of our total Woodbridge population. The pandemic has underscored the importance of the Woodbridge Center's mission of providing vital services that allow seniors to age in place and not move out of Woodbridge thereby saving the town money. For many, the Woodbridge Center is a lifeline in these challenging times, feeding, entertaining, socializing, transporting, vaccinating, and providing warmth with fuel assistance. At our Human Services Commission meeting on November 7th, the commission voted unanimously to support the six-year capital budget improvement plan. I hope both boards will fund our capital requests so we can finally finish the project with all the necessary tools to provide important services to a large segment of our town residents. Please enable us to do it once and do it right by funding our construction ad alternates. Thank you and happy holidays. Good evening. Hi, Sheila at home. Uh, <clears throat> just going to go through a couple of the specifics. Woodbridge is planning for a future which includes a drastic rise in its senior population over the next 10 years. The Senior Center's transportation program and meal delivery program are vital services to allow seniors and residents with disabilities to safely age in place while maintaining their highest possible level of independence. A new vehicle is critical to the success of meeting this need. The transportation program regularly provides over 1,600 trips annually to Woodbridge residents. We find ourselves here again asking for a new vehicle for the Senior Center's transportation program. If this sounds familiar, it's because we ask each year. The transportation program provides reliable transportation to medical appointments, banking, grocery and pharmacy shopping, as well as for social needs. To be clear, we're not only speaking of the frailest residents, but those who, for whatever reason, find it difficult to navigate complex driving situations or do not have the means to have their cars repaired when needed. We also use this vehicle to deliver healthy meals to Woodbridge residents, many who are homebound or would not otherwise have hot meals. 
The current vehicle received from the police department in 2020 has a substantial number of miles on it. Currently, this 2007 has 180,000 miles on it. Maintenance issues have been a serious problem since we received the vehicle. These problems include no heat, no air conditioning, chronic issues with the tires, replacement of the alternator, and more. These are similar issues to the previous decommissioned police vehicle we had received. Last week, when Chief Capiello presented his capital budget, he mentioned that with the arrival of the police department's two new vehicles, they have identified another cruiser to be decommissioned and available to the senior center. The vehicle slated to be given to the senior center is a 2008 Crown Victoria with 180,000 miles on it. We are literally replacing one problem with another. Would any of you want to put your elderly parents into an unreliable car? Or would any of you want to depend on these vehicles for your necessary transportation? Unfortunately, unless you fund this request, we will continue spending valuable staff hours trying to arrange repairs with the one mechanic in public works who is often unavailable to us because of his busy schedule, or trying to find outside providers to repair the vehicle, changing transportation schedules due to having the vehicle unusable, adding more time and mileage to transports because the vans cannot go on the Wilbur Cross and therefore must take longer routes, and limiting service to only those who can access the vans. We'll hope to receive the necessary funding for a new vehicle rather than be awarded another hand-me-down vehicle which is unreliable at best and ask you to please furnish us with the tools we need to provide this incredibly important service to the town's residents. We are currently in the midst of a long-awaited senior center renovation project. The project has been funded with a steep grant with matching funds from the Senior Center's fundraising dollars, state bond commission money, federal ARPA funds, and human services budget dollars. Unfortunately, the cost of construction materials has been growing at astonishing rates. The room divider requested in the FY24 capital budget was originally included in the architectural and design plans for the lounge but was moved to the ad alternates list when costs associated with the construction grew to in, due to inflation. The room divider allows the senior center to run multiple programs simultaneously for best use of the soon to be renovated space as was the practice prior to the renovation. Additionally, you'll see a request for another item that was originally planned for inclusion in the renovation project but has since been reserved to maximize the funds for critical use with basic construction costs. The Senior Center Director, who I forgot to introduce, this is Christy Moriarty, and you all have met her before. Um, the Senior Center Director has received $9,500 in grant money from the Area Agency on Aging South Central Region to cover the installation costs of the ceiling mounted projector, screen, and software programming. However, the equipment will still need to be funded. This invaluable addition will allow the senior center and other town departments who use this space the ability to host meetings, provide educational programs, movies, virtual presentations, hybrid Zoom opportunities, as well as the important use of assistive technologies. We appreciate your attention to these requests and look forward to a favorable re response. Thank you. I'm just curious, um, the vehicle, what do you, what do you, you got 35,000 here. What do you, what are you imagining you're going to get for 35,000? Uh, so there's two options. There's going to the state list that they have available vehicles. And also Christy did some research to find vehicles that are um, very friendly towards seniors. They're easy to get in and out of their height, their, their comfort level. 
their handles on the doors, and she found a vehicle, um, a Subaru, Subaru Forester, and priced it. It's around thirty thousand okay. dollars. So that's what we're looking for, and you know, I I I just think that after all these years, I don't think you want us spending the time we spend trying to fix these cars every year when it, it might just be solved for a good 10 years if we, you know, and we don't beat up cars like the police do. No offense to them, they need to beat up cars. But for every mile that is listed in the 180,000, that's just moving time. These vehicles run often 24 hours a day. They're on but not moving. So, you know, there's even more wear and tear on police vehicles. That's it for me. If there are any other questions, please. Anybody else? No? Yeah. I just had a question. Since we're on the vehicles, uh, you said that these vehicles are running nonstop or something. Uh, do we have that? Do we have that much use of this? I don't. So that's for the police. When before we uh, get right, them. Right, right, right. Okay, they, I see. They keep them at construction sites. And right, and and the, what? So what is the amount of use that you do in terms of these trips for seniors? So as I said, it's approximately sixteen hundred trips a year. Uh huh. Um, we take residents to medical yeah. appointments. We take residents grocery shopping, pharmacy, banking. Um, we've recently started taking them to social engagements. You can imagine if your husband goes in for surgery and ends up in a rehab for four weeks, but you can't drive, that you might like to go to Hamden and visit him. Um, these are the kinds of things that we're able to do for the seniors in town and not have them have to move to an assisted living or move out of town. Um, and, and we provide that so that, you know, I mean, originally, the premise of all of this is not only is it a wonderful service for our residents and any of us would be happy if our relatives could make use of it but as susan alluded you know these houses that these seniors live in um, are often you know they're paid for that helps them maintain their independence and when they sell them we're getting families in there and those families believe me are costing i know matt knows this um, you know, each kid that they move in with has to be educated for a year. You educate two kids for a year, you've got our car. You know, it, it, it's a matter of keeping the seniors here so that they can live independently, live out their lives in the town where they pay taxes for 40, 50 years and, um, and also save money, it's prudent. Yes, we have, we have two accessible vans. Unfortunately, they are, even though they're accessible, they're accessible for folks in wheelchairs. Many of our seniors are between the stage of needing a wheelchair, but not being able to climb onto a van. Um, additionally, you know, with the Wilbur Cross, the vans can't go. Um, and, and there's driveways in Woodbridge, the vans can't go. And that's why there's two separate requests in this process. Oh, and, one and later on, program. one of our vehicles will age into about 10 years, and we get a grant. We apply for the 5310 Federal Transportation Grant, and um, th at that point, we'll need matching funds to the grant, which ends up being ten to $15,000. I'm going to err on more like 15 in this climate, um, but you know, we get a $73,000 van. I think I knew that. Right, and I didn't identify those because I think you are limited in time and I've already taken up a lot of your time um, and it's years out so we can talk about it next year. Thank you. Anybody else? You're all oh, set? Wait, I'm sorry. Projector. Are you looking for a motorized screen? What's the, what's the plan for the ceiling on a projector? Is it a motorized screen? Is it a thick screen that you put up? These because, because PD, when they came for their budget, they want $8,000 for a brand new. Correct. So, so I was just curious if, why, what the difference in cost. If you've been um, to the library, 
Um, this is the same company that installed the library's uh, projector and screen, and then there's <coughs> some uh, hardware on the wall that allows you to access the software to utilize it and interface with people's um, laptops and whatever they bring to present. Um, and this is the same company, and these are the prices from that company. Maybe something, Tony, that we can, if the PD gets it, we can combine and we can buy them maybe together to, to save 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 some money that way. Me, Dwight, if you can think of it, we can. No, do I'm it. just I'm throwing it out. <laughs> I I'm love just... it. I love it. Yeah, this company is reputable, and they have installed already for one of the town apartments, so it's possible for an economy of scale they might give us a better break. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next is the uh, Thomas Darling House. Hello. Is this on or do I need to turn it on? I think it's on. Can you hear me? Uh, hello? Speak into it. Hello? You're on. You're hey, you on. got it. Okay. You didn't know. <laughs> it, it has a red dot here. So that means it's on. <laughs> Um, I'm Alexia Belpron. I'm president of the Amity and Woodbridge Historical Society. And uh, we have the uh, tenure agreement to manage the property um, that includes the Darling House and all of the outbuildings that are on the property. So um, I think you have the, um, the budget requests in front of you. Um, next year, we have four different things um, uh, that need attention. The first is the roof on the caretaker wing um, and also the connecting middle barn, which is, um, if you've been to the property, you have the caretaker wing behind the main house and then there is a barn that is connected to that. Um, the roof on the caretaker wing was, this, er, it was the same age as the original roof on the house that was replaced in 2016. At the time, the roofers noted that you don't have much time left on the caretaker wing. And so we are now six or seven years later. And then on the middle barn, that roof is actually leaking. So um, uh, we have requests for funds to have both of those roofs done um, in the next capital budget. Um, I don't know what order I'm in here. So. Uh, the uh, other um, item is actually the remaining work on the cow barn. So the Historical Society received a sizable historic restoration fund grant to do all of the preservation and repair work um, that is needed by the cow barn that was identified with an engineering survey that we obtained with another report, uh, another grant. Um, and some of that work, it was urgently needed in one to three years, and the report was from 2021. Uh, as has happened with all construction projects, the estimate came in at 2.5 times the original estimates. So there is a portion of the, the Last year, we had asked to have the match in the capital budget, and 55000 is in the capital budget. But the whole project now is going to cost, um, so that would have been matching. So the total mm -hmm. would have been 110 Now the project is going to cost um, at least 250 and up to 300000 with contingencies. So um, we have asked the Board of Selectmen for additional funds, but have also found a way to push some of the work to be done in July so that um, a portion of those additional funds could come in this year's capital budget as opposed to just finding all of the funds in this year's town budget um, from other sources. So that is um, uh, the historic restoration fund for the cow barn. Um, 
with another grant that the Historical Society got, we had assessment of some assessment of the house itself. And the building assessor noted that the east side chimney is actually um, not in good shape and uh, likely the chimney may need to be rebuilt from the roof line up, potentially from the attic line up. Um, we are looking for um, historic uh, masons or that can deal with historic chimneys at the moment, but um, estimates for that work are between fifteen and twenty thousand um, dollars to make sure the chimney doesn't fall down. And the last item. Is that a working chimney? No, that one is not a working it's chimney. Not a working chimney. No, the other one is, and that one's okay, but this one is not. The fireplaces are boarded up, um, but there is obvious water um, inside the chimney, which has degraded the the. Um, mortar significantly. Um, the last thing that we have put in this year's capital budget um, is actually work that we'd be done at the very end of the, the fiscal year. But based on what's happened with the cow barn and us getting a grant and then having to come after the fact and asking for money and it's an urgency and then it's a problem for the town. We have put in the matching funds for the preservation work on the horse barn and the ice house. These were also buildings surveyed with the engineering survey in 2021. The Historical Society itself paid for the absolute immediate repairs needed to stabilize the ice house last year. But, um, and that's the, the building that sits behind the cow barn on the west side of the road. Um, there is still substantial work to be done there. You can see, um, you can see right through the wall um, in one corner, but that wasn't a, a structural emergency. And then there is also uh, work to be done on the horse barn. So the amount here uh, for, uh, I think it's $102,300, that would be the matching portion of, we intend to write a grant again if we successfully complete the current Historic Restoration Fund grant for the cow barn. We have every reason to believe that the state will also award funding for this next project. So this portion would be the match. We did three times the original estimates based on what happened this year and included a 25% contingency. I think that's it. Questions? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, uh, next is public works. Good evening, everybody. I think your paperwork, you might have <clears throat> the vehicle, the truck replacement uh, first on your schedule. <clears throat> when I put a budget together, um, obviously we have a fleet and cycling that fleet replacement over time it has a tendency to alternate from a small vehicle to a large vehicle. <clears throat> In this rep year representation, a small vehicle, a pickup, would be one of the vehicles that would be scheduled to be replaced. But in the six-year plan, we also have uh, uh, a larger vehicle, the 10-wheeler, and we also have uh, a frontline plow truck. <clears throat> and so it alternates back and forth as what we believe to be needed. Um, <clears throat> the 10 wheeler that is in a future year, we spent the last six months working on the body. We even had an independent firm that builds trucks come down and look at the structural members on the body. And basically we've rebuilt it to the best of our ability to keep it going for probably a couple years. 
but if not, the body would need to be replaced. It's not worth it to get into the structural repairs because we've got a quote of almost $30,000 just for that. And you still wind up with an old body when you're all done. <clears throat> Anyways, the, I try to look for reserve money for trucks uh, and equipment, but sometimes in the trucks, because we're not building a reserve on an annual basis and the timeline for everything, so that's why you'll get the fluctuations as presented in the timeline. But this year it's a, a small truck that's being requested. Does anybody have any questions on the trucks? <clears throat> Moving on, the equipment reserve and I use the term reserve for this because there are big ticket items in this, this budget as well. Uh, they, they're not immediate replacement, but I figured rather than spike the budget in any one year to build a reserve to make the purchases. Um, <clears throat> we've already purchased a boom mower and I found out that when we budgeted for it based on estimates, uh, there was a significant price increase, and I had to do uh, a line request for funding in order to make that purchase. And that piece of equipment is currently on order. And because of these changes and fluctuations in prices, um, I'm trying to break it out so that we, we can incorporate possibly any of those fluctuations in the, the actual, because to try to price something that's several years out, and it's a big ticket item. We don't know where those well, costs are going to lie. <clears throat> but I've broken it down based on uh, an expenditure um, or a reserve expenditure, if you want to look at it from that, before actual purchases. Is there any questions on what I've proposed? The next one <clears throat> is road money. <clears throat> this, I believe, is critical to my department's operation. The infrastructure, the roads is, is um, to give you an example, we have roughly 80 miles of road in town. And current funding and past practices, um, we've usually paved about two and a half to three miles of road a year. So you can see how we're currently funding things that it's really not adequate when you have 80 miles of road in town. <clears throat> and to, ha to have funding that comes up a little short from what proposals are in the past <clears throat> and what their current needs might be just, just in the, the next year because we have different treatment methods. We have full death reclaiming, which pulverizes the road and you replace two surfaces, the base surface and the writing surface of the road. <clears throat> That's the more costly alternative. We also have milling and, and paving, mill and fill sometimes referred to, and that's what we've been doing <clears throat> over the past couple of years. It does make a big improvement, but not every road is a candidate for that. So even though I'm making a request on the six-year plan, I think that maybe the boards should consider bonding for roads due, due to the sheer volume and the rate of deterioration. Uh, that's something that the boards, we can discuss with Tony what options might be available to the town. Uh, <clears throat> but I think that the current funding, as far as the past couple of years, it's been ad adequate due to uh, inflation. The, the cost of just doing business, the product, you, you, everybody's aware of the oil prices, <clears throat> how they are, that they're, they're all over the place. And to try to get a, a sound estimate on doing anything is very, very difficult. And I usually have to wait until we're almost ready to pave <clears throat> before I can get those figures in place. Um, this year was very, very tight. In fact, I think we had a little bit, we even tapped into what little bit of dollars were available to, in order to just make ends match and meet for this year. 
<clears throat> so if the boards would consider, you know, uh, fully funding, at least for this year, and then consider options for uh, years going out, possibly bonding. Anybody got any questions on roads? State, there's about 120 miles of road, and we don't do anything with that. Right. I just wanted to. Yep. Okay. No. Thank you. I, it's actually 78.76 miles we have. I'll give into, you the eight. That's it. Right. You're good. I use that for conversation purposes. There you go. <clears throat> and the last one on public works would be the Bridge and Waterway Reserve. This is deals anything with drainage culverts and it wouldn't entail like a bridge replacement or things like that but it's maintenance we also use some engineering money uh, to, to the obligations under stormwater and stuff out of this line item or if you ever watch our meetings uh, in previous years we always regrettably reduced the road budget we really do so, but it's a big number and invariably it, it, it's affected but I I hear you and I, I tend to agree with you um, just one other question I had and it's really not capital I was watching TV before I came here and they were talking to public works and, and everybody seems to be sure to help are we okay help wise we're, we're doing okay we have guys I mean, to plow I mean, the streets. it's, it's kind of like the tide there's high points and low points yeah uh, we do we meet our obligations from a comfort level, there's, there's, we could always add staff um, to benefit, but um, <clears throat> given the nature of everything that the town is up against, I look at that too. And um, manpower is always something because we, we're doing our work based on the staff that we have. But if a man's out on vacation, somebody gets sick, you know, you always have that dilemma. What do you do? How do you replace that person? And so it is an issue, and and it, but it's it's been an issue as long as I've worked here. Okay. All right. You're also going to do waste management, right? Yes. This one is a little more simple, in, in the, because of the uh, the attributes within the transfer station. Um, one is always the in the back of our minds is the compactor. Uh, replacements the sustainability of that we we uh, our building maintenance guys and the mechanic they've been remarkable in keeping things up and running but there's going to be a point where we do have to do something <clears throat> how old is it how old is the it? Uh, one the first compactor was put in in uh, 1974 I'm sorry 1994 and the other one was put in about two years later and they run every day. Some some of it is not just the mechanical operations; it's the structural portion of things too, because it is a steel framework, the hydraulics and electrical components. So, uh, because of the demand that's put on them, um, oh, we've looked into replacements, but we haven't gotten really very very serious because everything has been repaired and stays online but there's always that thing I have to represent it in the budget nothing for this but it is a reserve you know there's looking uh, going out funding to replace them or upgrade them if you want to look at it from that perspective and the other thing that's critical <clears throat> is compactors or, or the containers themselves I've got two containers. One of them is, is being uh, held together. If I have to, I'm going to have to take it out of service and see if our hauler can rent one to us just to keep it something in line for the recyclables. And the other one is the uh, one of the compactor containers. Um, it, was, it was welded on the thing that it was from 2008. Um, the main rails are... are basically wearing off the bottom of the container and then of course the doors on them have to stay contained and dollar amount I'm representing which is looking for a purchase this year would be to replace two of those containers one being the compactor and one an open top
Okay. Any questions for Warren? Okay. I guess that's it. Very good. Thank you. Thanks. Now, next is fire, but did I see them go running out? Oh, they're here? Oh, okay. I thought I saw the door open and ran out. Fire Commission. Hello. Hello. How are you? Good. Okay. Was that your alarm that was going off? What's that? Was yeah, that your alarm? Oh, it's a test. a list of uh, the equipment that we have the bigger equipment um, just so you have an idea on uh, the year what it is model and whether it has uh, a tank on it and what the GPM of the pump is on that tr specific truck just so you have some idea um, I don't know how it's listed in your thing to start I could jump around however you need it to engine three is the first thing we have engine three Payment for engine three. Yeah, yeah so that we already have that, right? Yeah, we already have that truck. Yeah. It's just uh, another payment that's uh, come up and due. Next one is air packs. So uh, we made a uh, presentation last year. We we're going to fund it, and then after talking to Tony, uh, we decided to possibly bond the air packs, and that's coming up next week. The air uh, air packs and the radios. The lease. Uh, the lease. Month at this meeting, we authorized to move forward. Yeah. So uh, this is for 10 air packs. Uh, these are the air packs that are up uh, that are 15 years and we have to replace them per DOT standards along with the bottles associated with those air packs. So um, that's what that number is. Engine nine. Engine nine is the new truck we ordered. Uh, Right before uh, the beginning, uh, actually last December, uh, we just got word a couple of weeks ago that delivery on the new truck is going to be, they're hoping, October of 23. So it's <laughs> almost it's almost two years, so 22 months. But once, once that means in October of uh, next year, we go out, we take a look at it as long as everything goes, they'll probably ship it down and then there's... Um, PMs that have to be done once it gets here. So we probably won't take delivery of the truck until probably November or even December of next year. It's in Florida. It's not It's not even being built now. They're having supply chain issues, so they're waiting for really? stuff to come in still. Hey, that's a surprise. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so, so wait, that... Does it get driven or shipped up? Uh, driven up. Yep. Um... So even though we have it in FY24's budget, we usually pay these in the uh, rears. Yeah. So even though we have it here, we want to know it's there, but we may not have to actually fund it until the following year. And this is an E1 also? This is in, uh, no, I'm sorry. The new truck's coming out of Minnesota. My fault. The last truck came out of Florida. This truck's coming out of Minnesota. This is a Rosenbauer. Rosenbauer. What makes you... Uh decide which one to get so it all has to do with really R&D so um, as you as we get closer and go through the bid process we see what options are available see who's got the latest um, stuff out there with uh, research and development we go to a bunch of conferences throughout the year especially one big one where they have all the trucks there and you get to play with them you see them you see the different things that each manufacturer um, has to offer and then that's how we based our decision Actually, they, they, they drive it back. We don't drive it back because the truck only will go. The truck only goes uh, 64 miles an hour. <laughs> so it's a long drive back. It's a long drive over. Um, 
The next one is hose. We haven't funded this in a while. We haven't asked for it. Um, we had an issue a few years ago where we lost a lot of hose and we needed to do an emergency contingent uh, purchase order. So we need to replace that. We've been uh, doing pretty good, um, but we lost quite a bit of hose uh, this past year. Uh, all fire hose has to be tested once a year per NFPA. So we've been losing, we lose uh, some each year, but this year we probably lost close to 2,700 feet of hose, so we need to replace that. So this would come out of that along with nozzles, gates, and everything else that doesn't pass that we have to, that we have to replace with that. Um, the hose that were actually, that failed is uh, over 18 years. And usually NFPA states that you, have, you should replace it every 10 years because you have dry rot and other mechanical problems that go on with the hose, but we've been testing it. It's been coming back passing, so we're almost getting at least uh, almost two cycles out of it. So we're doing pretty good with hose, but this is what that's for. The aerial, it's gonna probably be the next thing we're gonna talk about. Uh, probably sometime next year, we'll come back to you guys and start talking about that because that's gonna be a considerable number. Um, the association bought the truck uh, back in 2017 and it was just to hold this over. Um, we had some other mechanical failures going on that we needed to replace these other trucks. So basically got put uh, not on the back burner, but those other ones were more of a priority that we saw because we had some failures. But this is something that we really need to have a serious talk about and uh, look and see how we're gonna fund this and move forward. Radio communication upgrade. So this is part of the radio th uh, per, um, we uh, submitted to the town. So a few years ago, the town um, uh, upgraded the main radio system in town. That was all the main radio sites, uh, towers, generators, um, and basically the brains of the system. These are what we call the subscriber units. So these are the portable radios that the guys carry. These are the tr radios that are in the trucks that communicate. Um, and they are at the end of their useful life and we ha they are now obsolete and we actually can't even get more than half the radios fixed. So we knew it was gonna be coming up, uh, but we didn't need to replace them at that point when we uh, upgraded the new radio system, but we're at that point where we need to, and this is uh, definitely a big firefighter safety issue. And that's what I have. Do you guys have any questions? Any questions, anybody? I wish I could tell you that I even remotely understand this radio stuff. But every every year between the police and fire, I don't I, I, I don't have any clue. We have, have to Yeah, I know. I, I thought when we did that big expenditure, that was it. But now you got all this. I lose. I, the days of two cans. I, and I, are gone. I surrender. I surrender. Whatever they say, whatever they say they need for radios, I have no clue. We're going to go with what they tell us. So. So. Anything else? Okay, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. <clears throat> and uh, last but certainly not least this evening is the Recreation Commission. Where are the shorts? Where are my legs and back? <laughs> <laughs> we'll start off let's just start off uh, on the front page here with what's where we are in uh, programming we have a liner we put the pool we put the uh, Adam put up the Adam's team Tim put up the skating rink skating are up a brand new liner came with a five inch hole in it <laughs> that was wonderful but we have Rad Parsons you know the fixer of all goes down to Woodbridge Lumber he gets the that thing on TV where you spray the, you know, you go slide on the boat and you can what do you like this. We fix it. We call the company. We explain to him like that. We took a picture of it. We sent it to him. 
sending us a brand new liner for next year. So we save three thousand dollars next year. We'll have a liner. We'll have that, and the liner that we have is working, but we'll have a brand new liner, which I thought was great. It was come. That's why you work with a, you know certain companies. They they back what they say. So we have that. We're all set there. Jim has some equipment. Um, it's a rotating thing. We just take equipment out of out of service when it's uh, too old after so many years because uh, using it commercially, you have to be safe like that. So starting with the first year, this is something that we really need. Um, everybody's experienced trouble with getting people to work and things like that. And I don't know what it is, but kids don't want to work. So Dave Cohen had to go out there and he had to really beg and everything like this. And I even had to help put up the tents. It, it's just too hard to put up, you know, seven, eight, nine little tents. It's, it, it's cost consuming. It's hard. We put them all up. Then we have to take them down, you know, and then we have to go and restore them. This is one big tent I think we could really use. This is a tent at 30 by 50. We can use it uh, anywhere. The town can use it. The town could take it to use it for any function, anything they want like this. We could set it up for the road race. We could set it up in the summertime for the concerts so people can, you know, older people can be underneath it. I would be underneath it as an older person. <laughs> so that's why I think it's important that this is not taken out. We really need this because the small tents are just, and they're old. Uh, the tops are going. If I was going to replace the tops of each one, they're about they're about you know seven eight hundred dollars a top. You know, ten tops, they're seven thousand dollars. Here at sixteen, you're throwing seven thousand dollars over into you know those small little tents that just aren't going to do because we don't have the labor like this. This tent would be uh, we would need the um, town crew to come up and help and set this up. This is a large one, but it's something that could be done and be used anywhere, anytime, and stored. We have the storage space to put it in, in our trailers, and we're ready to go. The next one is just a rotating treadmills replacement. We do this for safety. It's an ongoing replacement. They only last so many years, and one of them is going to be running out in 2025, so we would replace it in, in the fitness center, and the next one would be in 2027, would be the, with the second one that have to, has to be replaced. The next one would be in 2026, Outdoor volleyball court. All we need is PVC piping. It's, it's a large piping that goes around the outside of the court. Saves the uh, sand from washing away. Uh, Adam comes in with his, they come in with their truck. They bring it back to sand like this. But this way, it doesn't wash away ever like this. The court is always used. We actually decided to leave it open. There's so many people that wanted to use it. We have our league. We have our league play and everything like that. But then people come and use it. And that's, that's a nice area in front of the country club over there. We have that. And I think what would be good is right next to it, fenced in, because you always have to fence in a skating rink for safety reasons and for, you know, it doesn't get destroyed. You put the skating rink there. Beautiful flat tennis court that was there. It would be perfect. It's fenced in like that. We could have both and make that a little recreational area right there. It would be perfect. And there's parking. So that, that would be a nice one. We then go to the fitness trail, fitness stations. Fitness stations, we've been having the Boy Scouts, the Eagle Scouts have been coming in and, and fixing up all our stations and everything like that. So every station has been, been fixed. It's up to, up to date. But by 2027, the stations that we have, as they deteriorate to the point where they can't be fixed, we just replace each station. So this would be enough to replace three stations of the 14. And we just would, would do that and go on with, with, with the... Um, on the walking trails, and the walking trails are used unbelievably, the number of people like this. Um, someday when we get back to the real world and bring the running club back to, um, you know, the Fitzgerald property, uh, we're going to have a problem with parking because when I go there in the morning and I drive by, it's, it's packed already. When people come, they love it. it it's, just a, it's just a great asset to the town. It's really nice. Um, basketball court. We don't have a full basketball court. At the um, Alleghi property, there's a basketball court. But it's a small court. It's not a large court. It's a semi-court. And the baskets are kept at a low level, lower level, and not 10 feet, so the children can use it. It's more important. I have a suggestion that down the road, we put together an area. There's two spots that I think we could, we could do. There's the West River parking lot at the far end, all the way down by the tennis courts or volleyball courts, whatever that company is back there. That big open parking lot in the back, it's wide open. You can put a tennis court, uh, basketball court right there. 
It has electricity we could hook up to if we wanted to put you know, lights on it or like that. That's a nice area. The second area is the Allegi property. As you come in and look a little bit to the left, as you come up, there, there's a big open area, beautiful area right there. Put a basketball court right there. You have basketball for the older kids, basketball for the younger kids. And then the, when the older kids come, the little kids can't play on the court. They just, they just can't play. And you can't tell them not. They can't play. You know, so that would be a... As you come in the driveway, as you come up the driveway. Not not from uh, Center Road, but not Center Road, but from Pease. Oh, there's a road at Center? No, I'm like, that, that, Pease Road. Yeah, okay. As you come up Pease Road and you just get to the top and you look blocked. to your left. Yeah. Got and it. that's where I think they want to put the dog park. Okay. They were talking about you know, maybe putting, maybe putting, or the tent Got going it. there. Okay. But that would be a perfect spot yep. for, because then you have all the parking in the front. Now, that would be an excellent spot for a skating rink, but you, it has to be fenced in. Right. Because the problems that Orange had and we had when we first did this over there, the kids go out, they can go on any time. They don't mean to, but the rice isn't safe. It cracks, the feet go through, the kids come in with sticks, they poke it. Once you poke that, that liner, you know, it's done. So, but I think that would be an excellent spot down the road to put a, put a, uh, you know, a full, full court, full court bas basketball there. And the last one here, I put this in because Matthew Galetti told me to put this in, that he's really involved in this and would like to have this. This is the uh, Memorial, Matthew Galetti Memorial 90-foot diamond. <laughs> it's on the back burner. It's all the way down the road. I never want to take it out. Maybe someday, somewhere, someone like this. I thought maybe, you know, all the, everybody coming up, my grandkid is in, 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 my oldest grandkid is in high school now. Um, he won't see it, but maybe somewhere down the road when everything gets better, when the financials get better, anything like that, we could put in a 90 foot diamond in, in the town of which have our own 90 foot diamond for our own league. But that's, you know, that's why it's way down there. I'm a young man when this thing started. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was, you see, you beat me to it, Susan. There you go. I was telling my wife the other day, if something ever happened to me like this, and I was invalid and I was like this, the one thing I want you to do is pick me up, put me in the bed and bone me next to the guy like this, and just drive me around the rink. I don't have to do anything but just drive me. I was sitting in, I was sitting in my office about maybe less than a year ago. Oh, yeah. And I got this thing about Zambonis, the history of Zamboni. So I, I printed it, it with like 20 pages, <laughs> and I mailed it to him. <laughs> it was good reading in my bathroom for my yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Perfect. Any questions? Uh, I think we're good. Okay. Thanks, Okay, everybody. thank you. Thank you. And uh, I believe that's it. Is there anything else we have to talk about? This is my 35th uh, presentation. Wow. Is that right? Okay, I think. All right, well, thank you, everybody, and uh, we'll talk soon.